uh, a trade-off. You can have, let's say, 100 milliamp of very, very clean power, but you're not going to be able to get 80 or 160 watts in the same way. Those, uh, that, a power supply like that would be extremely expensive. So let me uh, just uh, move on to the uh, other power supply as well, just so we can do the same, th same test with the other one. So I'm going to disable this output. I'm going to remove this guy. And I'm going to shift this one over so we can now look at it here. So same thing as I did before. I'm going to connect this guy. Now this, this is my hand. This noise is from my hand. I'm going to connect it. There it is. You can see very similar noise. Right now the power supply is disabled. I'm going to enable the output like so. And I'm going to focus in here so you can see the noise from the supply. So about the same as the other power supply. We have five and a half or so. So I can, again, zoom out. You can see that it does that repetitive uh, behavior there. So about 4.3, 5.5, it keeps jumping around. So the same as the other one. It's very good to see that these power supplies are very similar in terms of the respect. So you can expect the same great performance from both of them. I'm very happy with the uh, with the noise. I mean, I, I expect this type of noise to be uh, present on uh, all type of power supplies uh, like this. Just to demonstrate to you how good the noise of the Regal power supplies were, here I have my um, adjutant one that I showed you before. So the output is turned off here. So I have exactly the same setup. I have my load connected to the same connector through a BNC and an oscilloscope right underneath. So I'm going to enable the output, then we're going to look at the noise and compare it with the Regal. So here you go, Just enable the output, 10 volts, it's drawing almost uh, 1 amp. Now I'm going to go down and look at this Look at this go. You can see that the noise is higher. There is more noise on my Agilent power supply than there was on the Regal one. It's quite an accomplishment from Regal to be able to manufacture uh, such a low noise power supply. You can see the spikes. This is the same scale per division as before, and it reads more like uh, above uh, sometimes 10 or 11 millivolt peak to peak of noise. That was not the case with the Regal power supply. We had about five under the exact same voltage current and load conditions. Uh, but you also have to remember that this Agilent supply is quite old. I've had this for a long time. Uh, so perhaps the newer ones don't have as much noise. But at least with my existing one, you can have an idea of how low noise the Regal power supplies are for um, research and industrial applications. So, but there are a few things that, that need to be improved. For example, I don't like the fact that the display sample rate is so low. So let me show you what I mean by that. For example, here's the DP1116A. These are they're the same, same thing. So I'm going to connect my load back onto the power supply. Okay, here we go. So here's the load. I have it connected to the power supply, like so. And I will uh, enable the output. You can see a clear delay before the current shows up. Let's do it again. So, you see, it takes a while for it to even go away. So, here it says zero. I turn it on. This time it was faster. So again, you can see it samples once every second and display updates once every second, which is very, very slow. The Agilent supply does this many, many times a second. This is, may not seem like a big deal, but it can save your circuit. Sometimes you turn something on and you instantly see a current that is way too high and you can turn it on very quickly. And that tenth of a second or half a second difference can be, can be very important. As well as, of course, having a fast update rate will be very beneficial when you display this waveform. You can see these little, uh, little lines right now are from me turning the... You can also see how crisp and nice the display is. Uh, you can see that this little uh, line is going up and out. It's when I turn it and enable it and disable it. So if I disable it again, it goes down and I enable it again, it comes back up. But if I could somehow enter the sample rate into here and say sample 10 times a second or once, once a minute, 
this would be a huge benefit. I hope that they can add this feature to the power supply because it can, it's a huge added benefit. Furthermore, on the timer table, if I could tell in detail how much time to spend in sub one second between each voltages, it would again be a huge, huge benefit. So I really hope that they, they take these two, a few advice that I have to heart and update the firmware and uh, give us those features and also of course the feature of being able to read the voltages when the output is disabled the same way you can do it on this one on the DP1308 that will also be a huge improvement so what I want to do now next is that I want to also just briefly take a look at the web interface for the uh, the power supplies and how you can communicate with them and then uh, basically that would cover up uh, most of the things I wanted to test there is of course a ton more things you can test from power supplies and only scratching the surface again but uh, let's take a look at the web interface and then I'll give you some concluding remarks at the end so what I've done I've connected both of the power supplies through the Ethernet port at the back to a router a wireless router and I'm connected to the wireless router using my laptop so then I can go ahead and type right here the IP address of the first power supply and the IP address of the second power supply and then I can connect to the built-in web interface uh, for both of them so let's look at the DP1308 I have the, the welcome page that tells me information about the power supply and there's the network status of the power supply the network settings there's a full help and uh, the security settings for the power supply and there is a web interface so I can load up the web interface and it will load a, a high resolution photograph of the power supply as well as all the all the settings and all the information so I have basically all the buttons in front of me and I can press them and I change the settings so for example I can uh, say alright well I want to select uh, let's go down a little bit so select uh, this channel that's already selected let's say I want that at 12 volts I enter 1 and 2 so 12 volts shows up and I can say volts so now you can see that 12 volt is right here then I can enable all the outputs for example so I go all out and then it gives me that uh, warning that tells me are you sure you want to turn all the outputs on I say yes and it will change all the outputs there is a little bit of a delay between this and there but that's normal through the through the network so you can see that this this screen updates live uh, and I am looking at the power supply right now and all these settings are of course reflected on the power supply the only thing you can do is to turn it off of course, but if you turn it off, then this interface would, would go away. So you can see that this is very useful. I like that if you're, if you're far away and you're not in the lab, you just type the IP address in any browser. This would come up and you can see the status of the power supply. But unfortunately, this web interface is only available on the 1308. It's not there on the 1116. You can see that the button is missing uh, from the dp 11168 So I spoke to regal about this and they said that they're coming out with a new software that would allow them allow you to communicate with all their instruments effortlessly and seamlessly and you can find them on network in different locations and communicate with them no matter what interface they're using to the computer a nice a unified single solution for all their equipment and that's where they have put their effort right now and that's why this particular supply is not updated with the proper interface yet so they haven't decided that if they will do this or not but regardless, I'm going to wait and see the new software they're going to release. And then we can do a full test of you know, all the capabilities of the software-based capabilities of the power supply. Because there is a lot. I could dedicate an hour video just covering all the different ways power supply can be automated through different drivers. Uh, Visa or the, uh, or the Alexa I was talking about. Or you can e control it even through MATLAB. So all these drivers are available to you. You can also lose lab view. And, uh, but it's going to take a long time to go through all this. So I'm going to wait and see what the next software update is going to be like, and then I can give you a, a, a heads up on what that looks like. But just a, for just a quick view, and just to compare in terms of features, uh, the, how beneficial this type of interface is, and how, much, how many functionality they have put into these power supplies, it's quite amazing. So uh, now I'm going to just uh, talk a little bit overall about uh, some of my other experiences with this power supply and then wrap up this video and I hope that you've uh, found this one useful so you can let me know what you thought about the power supply uh, I'm sure uh, we can have an interesting discussion or if you have any other questions I'd be more than happy to answer 
Well, we did a whole bunch of different tests on these power supplies and I hope that uh, the tests were beneficial and you got a good idea of how these power supplies perform. I've been using them for a while and I'm really impressed with the, the set of functionality and the features that are built into them. Uh, they cost just over $800 each, which seems like a lot, but when you compare them to uh, equivalent power supplies with a lot, lot less features like the ones maybe from Agilent or other manufacturers, they can cost well over a thousand. So for the price you get, it's a remarkable value for money and the specs are uh, basically up par with uh, anything else that's on the market. So uh, I definitely recommend that you go ahead and check the power, check the, the power supplies website so you can get all the detailed information you may need. Also, if you have any other questions about a particular test or some other thing that you like to see, uh, please let me know. I have a list of a few things that I like to see improved. Uh, one is, of course, uh, the faster sampling rate so that the, the values show up quickly on the display. That's very important. As well as, of course, having the ability to maybe control it through the web on both models and as well as uh, being able to have the readouts uh, back from the supply live on both models as well, not just on the 1116A. Um, so, uh, but again, I've only tested on the surface. There's a lot of other things that can be tested with these power supplies. So let me know uh, what you think. Um, I highly recommend them. Um, if you are um, in the research area or you're in the industry trying to decide a power supply, definitely one of the models I would consider. So let us know what you think.